All right, now let me start this video by reminding you uh, the Blavatsky's two family theorem. So there's a theorem, right? So you have a two sets of so two families of self subsets of one up to n, right? So a one up to a m and b one up to b m, such that a i intersection b i is empty and a i intersection b j is non-empty when m to i is different from j. Then the number of such a thing. I mean, we have this inequality, but in particular, when each of ai have size r, each of bi has size s, then the number of them is at most r plus s choose r. Now, we want to prove the generalization of that, where this condition is weakened. So let me first state the theorem, so skew version of Blavatsky's two-family theorem. All right, so probably I can just copy. All right, I want it, yes. I want to copy. Oh, no, it's not easy. Copy and paste. Now I change these conditions or I less than J. Alright, so that's the only difference. And the only known proof, the, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the only known proof. And there's no combinatorial proof known. The only known proof is to use a wedge product. And we're gonna need the following lemma. In Rn, we can a set x of infinitely many point such that every subset of at most k points no m no at most n points is linearly independent. So how do we prove that? It's easy. Just let the vector to be one k k square k to the n minus one. This is my vector. This is an R n. All right. Now, I need to show that AI1, AI2, AIN is linearly independent. The same as showing that determinant of I1 I okay, one 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 I one I one I two I three I n I one square I two square I n square up to I one n minus one I two m minus one I n m minus one. As long as this de uh, this determinant non-zero, then they are linearly independent, and it's well known, right? Do you know this uh, determinant? x1, x2, xn, x1 square, x2 square, xn square up to x to the one n minus 1, x2 n minus 1, xn n minus 1. What is this determinant? We have, now this, you can think of it as a poly, polynomial, 
with the n variables right and this is gonna be right and and the thing is if two polynomials are equal i mean two variables are equal so xi is equal to xj then it will become zero so when you factor it out you must have this kind of term xi minus xj so for all this thing ij you must have this kind of term right and Now, let's compare the degree of this polynomial. What is the degree of this polynomial? Well, it's going to be, I mean, when you choose one from each row and take a product, then degree is going to be like 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus up to n minus 2, right? So it's n minus Up to, up to n minus 1, right? So it's one, or sum from uh, 1 up to n minus 1. So it's n times n minus 1 over 2. That's n choose 2. So when you compare the degree, they have the same, already the same degree. So this must divide the left hand side, and yet the degree is the same. So the only polynomial you could have is a constant product constant multiple of the right hand side now it's just it means to determine this constant c and uh, i can just evaluate this thing right so if i give distinct numbers now is that a best way to evaluate this constant What is the best way? So this constant turns out to be 1. Why is it 1? Uh, let's see. Right. If I comp yeah, I think it's I can just compare the coefficients of x1 to the m minus 1. Right. So what is the coefficient of x1 to the n minus 1? Uh, on the right hand side, it's going to be 1, right? Because x1 is always multiplied with positive sign. On the left hand side, x1 to the n minus 1 is... Uh, Oh, maybe I should change the other. So let's put this way. <laughs> then, then compare the coefficients of x n to the m minus one. Then on the right hand side is plus one, and the on the left hand side is plus one. Right? Yeah. So that's better. And this is th there's a name for this, right? Is van der Waals identity? Yeah. So this is well known. I Probably, I think that if you have taken the linear algebra course, introduction to linear algebra course, even that has a uh, that covers this. All right. This means that if I one up to i n are distinct, then determinant is non-zero. So that proves that these points are linearly independent. And whenever I choose k of them, the n of them, they are linearly independent. So why is this useful for us? Skew bosons. Let's try to prove this skew boson of robust two family theorem. And this is due to Robas in 1977. So let's x to be the union, right? So now 
I have a families of AI and BI. So let X to be the union of AI mm, Well, actually, it doesn't matter I, Yeah, and so if you look at the statement of the theorem these 1 up to N doesn't do anything right? It's just a matter of R plus S I mean, the, the bound depends only on R and S Nothing on n. So let x be a subset in an infinite subset of R n. R R plus S. Right. So I'm gonna choose an infinite subset of vectors in R, uh, the R plus S dimensional vector space such that every set of uh, R plus S M, okay, every subset subset of size and most R plus S is linearly independent now uh, for each element in the union of AI BI right we associate X with uh, some element of X. So, in other words, I mean, we can just say we may we may assume AI BIs are subsets of X. All right, why not? So for, for a subset I of X, uh, let WI be the wedge product of the vectors in I. So this is in in the i6 g power of of this this vector space all right now for for all right So let AI be W of AI and BI be W of BI. So this is in the R6 to power of R process dimensional vector space. This is in the R6 S6 to power of R process. All right. Now, what can we observe? AI wedge BI. Now, notice that AI and BI have a common element. So that means this will become zero. Oh, non-zero, because they don't have a common element. And any alpha set, vect alpha set vectors are linearly independent in X. Linearly independent. Yeah. 
and AIBJ. If I is less than J, then AIBJ is zero because AI intersection BJ is non empty. Right? If you have a wedge product where two of them have the same vector, then you when you take a wedge product it becomes zero. Now we claim that A1, A2, A M is linearly independent. As the vectors of this thing. So if not, okay, suppose CIAI is zero, then okay, CJAJ is zero, then CJAJ wedge BI is also going to be zero for, for some i, but the only time this is non zero is when i is equal to j, so CIAI wedge BI is zero. This is non zero vector, so CI is zero. So, therefore, they are linear independent, so the norm M is the most dimension of this vector space. So, that's oh, what is V? It's an R, R process, right? So it's R process, choose K. No, not K. <laughs> it's R60 of power. All right, so that proves the Skewazon of Blobas' uh, two families theorem. So this is a cute proof. As soon as we use wedge product, then this is immediately uh, true. Now, one can actually prove the generalizations for subspaces. So let W be a vector space over a field F and U1, U2, Um and V1, V2, Vm uh, be subspaces of W such that Dimension of U i is R, dimension of V i is S, and U i intersection V i has dimension zero, so they do intersect only at the origin, and U i inter intersection V j has positive dimension for all i less than j, then the number of these vectors is at most r plus s choose r. Now, we're not going to prove this at the moment. Right, because we, we need a, some tool to handle this. I will only show the partial proof. When dimension of W is equal to R plus S. Okay? So later we will show we will prove it without these assumptions. Right. So all right, then the proof is almost the same. Right, so for a, sub, for a subspace U of W with a basis X1, X2, 
P we write like with U as the the wet product of these things. I mean, of course, it changes depending on the choice of the basis, but I'm gonna choose any any choice, right? So for and then we say let uh, AI be the wet job wet job UI and BI be the wet job VI. So this is a vector in the R6 to the power of W. This is a vector in the S6 to the power of W. And the UI intersection VI is greater than zero. So that means uh, AI with VI is going to be non general. Okay? Because in a in a R process dimensional vector space, if you have two subspaces whose intersection only has dimension zero, then they span everything. So they're linearly independent. Right? And if I is less than J, the UI intersection VJ is non zero, so that means AI intersection BJ is zero. Okay. Now by the same proof, so A1, A2, AM is linearly independent. So this implies that M is the most dimension of R process. Exterior power of w, uh, w, which is R, no, not R process, R. That's the proof. So, this, I mean, if you look at this, we need the assumption that dimension of W is equal to R process. Otherwise, we have a different bound. This is the only place I use the the, fact, the assumption that dimension of W is R process. So what happens if the W has a larger dimension? And that's the topic of the next section. Okay? That's it.